Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Flat Earth Math. The subject for this edition is, are they really weightless on the ISS? Is there gravity on the ISS? Well, if the ISS is really in orbit around a spinning ball, and if the ISS maintains the altitude claimed, and if Newton's universal law of gravitation applies, and if the gravitational constant derived by Cavendish is true, then we can use these laws of gravity to determine what is exactly going on in the ISS and how they're being affected by gravity. So what is gravity? First of all, gravity is not a force. It is an acceleration. They made it an acceleration only because it's the only way they can get the formulas for gravity to work. And gravity is affected by distance as an inverse square. So the farther away you are from something, the less you are impacted by their gravity. The relationship between gravity and distance is expressed in Newton's universal law of gravitation, where big G is the gravitational constant. Big M is the mass of the Earth in kilograms. R is the radius of the Earth in meters. Little m is the mass of whatever body gravity is acting on, but this can cancel out for our purposes. When you plug in all the numbers and solve for g, you get 9.8 meters per second squared. Yes, gravity is a unit of acceleration. That's basically because it's the only way they could get gravity to work. One more thing. Gravity is measured from center of mass. To get the center of mass, you combine the radius of the Earth plus the altitude above the Earth. Okay, let's do math in space. For a person at an altitude of 435 kilometers on the ISS, if we take the gravitational formula and plug in all the numbers, we get a gravitational acceleration of 8.61 meters per second squared. If we compare the acceleration of gravity in the ISS with the acceleration of gravity at sea level at 9.8 meters per second squared, we find that in the ISS they are subject to 87.8% of sea level gravity. So, for example, if somebody weighs 160 pounds on the Earth, if they were in the ISS, they would still weigh about 140 pounds. So if they are being still subject to 87.8% of Earth sea level gravity, how can they do this? I know, I know what you're going to say next. Centripetal force. Actually, it's angular acceleration, but the principle is basically the same. That as the ISS curves around in its orbit, it's going to be pulling them upwards at the same time that gravity is pulling them down, and it all balances out. Well, if only that were true. Just how much angular acceleration are they being subjected to in the ISS? Let's do some more math. The formula for angular acceleration is shown here, where r is the radius of the turn or the orbit, which we found previously at 6.813 times 10 to the 6 meters. Big T is the time it takes to make one orbit. There are 15.5 orbits in a 24-hour period. This equates to 1.55 hours, which further equates to 5574 seconds per orbit. When you plug all these values into the formula, you come up with 8.66 meters per second squared as the angular acceleration 
of objects in the ISS. So, with an upward acceleration of 8.66 meters per second and a downward acceleration of 8.78 meters per second squared, the people in the ISS should actually be drifting downward almost constantly. But that's only part of the story. Have you actually looked at the orbit of the ISS? If you look at the orbital radius of the ISS, it appears to have a strong lateral component that's sinusoid, and the radius of this sinusoid movement seems to have a stronger curve radius than the actual radius of the Earth. So we could probably say that the angular acceleration is slightly more than gravitational acceleration. This would put it at maybe oh, 10 meters per second on the outside. So, if they are being subjected to a lateral angular acceleration of greater than their body weight, why are they not being thrown against the walls into all that delicate instrumentation and equipment? And why are they not strapped in most of the time? We're talking full body weight or better, and that's something a little tuck under the tow bars that they have there is not going to stop that kind of movement. Um, <clears throat> so, I think that there is no way that they could be maintaining the composure that they have and floating through the air on the ISS. Anyway, if anybody wants to check my math or make any corrections, please let me know. I would love to find out if there's anything I've missed, but there's no way they can be floating around like they do in the ISS.